Have you guys thought about getting into a foil drive? Well, I'm Cole and this is Ryan. We've logged a couple sessions now on our foil drives that we have gotten for the shop here. And we have some thoughts that we want to share with you guys so you guys can be better educated before you guys get into a foil drive. So Ryan, we spent some time on them. Yeah. I got my second session on it today. You've been riding them. I think I've so, got about three sessions on it. Okay. So what did you think about foil drive before you got your hands on it? Yeah, so my assumption, kind of what I was thinking the foil drive might be like, of course, maybe spend the most time researching this ahead of time, but I thought maybe it was going to be more like a e-foil where you kill the prop. I know there's some e-foils out there that have folding props and you can kind of do that, but then your, uh, your motor's down in the water. Obviously, they're a lot heavier. Um, so I thought this was going to be kind of more in that direction, but just like a lighter weight unit. So more closer to an e-foil than kind of what wing or prone foiling already feels like. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of my, my first thoughts about it before going out there and testing it. How about you? What kind of were you thinking? Yeah, so when I was looking at foil drive, I originally thought that it was going to get me up to speed just like prone foiling, if you're gonna paddle into a wave, I thought it was gonna be the easy button, so I would never have to paddle again. I'd never have to use a paddle for downwinding. I think I set my sights a little bit too high uh, and was humbled my first session, but really gotten dialed into the foil drive today, so got some good experience on it. Yes. But so Humble is a good way to say it, the, the first session experience for both of us. I, kind of expecting to just hit the button, go out there, pop yep. up on foil, ride out to a wave, yeah. and start foiling. However, that was not the case. I that think was both not the of case. us had a similar experience our first time out. We, uh, we grabbed too small gear. Yeah, too small gear I think is the biggest thing that hurt me the first time I tried foil drive. I spent a lot of time behind the boat, I spent a lot of time on the waves, so I got overconfident. I didn't take the advice that foil drive tried to give us on YouTube and I tried using a 33 and a half liter prone foil board to go try to surf the waves and that was not the right call. Ryan, did you, I think you did something similar. Similar experience, my board was a little bit bigger because I don't have much prone experience at all. Um, I went, I had a 54 liter board, um, it was about five feet long, so it's, it was big enough, but obviously not big enough to just get me right up on foil. Yeah, I had to get in the waves, use the waves to push and, and get me up. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, quite the experience. I couldn't get on the waves early enough to make up for my lack of skill. Okay, I was getting on the waves as they were pitching. And obviously, as you know, from prone foiling, if you don't have those skills to get up in those kind of conditions, you're just going to get pitched. Yep. And that's what happened. I think the boys have a good uh, couple clips on the... Uh, the wipeout uh, yeah. reels here of that, but uh, yeah, it was it was a humbling experience. Learned a lot that first session. Yep. I think we both went back, talked over our experience, what we yep. thought. We were on par with each other, and we both stepped it up and went with bigger gear for our second session. Yeah, and one thing I do want to point out for that first session, when I was on that really small board, I actually learned that foil drive is a tool. To learn, to learn how to ride, it got you into more waves, but it's also a tool for more advanced riders to get into waves that they couldn't previously get in before. The waves I was riding, or the waves that I was in for my first session, they were really, really small. There are waves that I could probably get away with on that same prone setup if I was just paddling, but with the foil drive, I found myself actually getting into those waves. Again, that first session, I should have gone with a bigger board just to learn how to use the foil drive, but it did, it certainly opened up my eyes, I don't know about you, just to the fact that foil drive can help you get into those smaller waves and waves that you couldn't get into previously before. Yeah, and you can motor around a wave that you wouldn't have been able to paddle to as well. Yeah. It's a really, really cool tool, but there's definitely a learning curve for it. So, we talked about our first session. You know, we learned a lot. We went back, we watched as much YouTube as we could from foil drive, going into the second session, How'd your second session go? So Was I held better? my board size. Okay. Um, went quite a bit larger. It didn't quite have the ideal board that I was looking for, but I went with a board that was, I think, about four or five inches longer. Okay. So um, what size board did you go on volume. for that second session? What was so the second, length? Of it? Second session, I was on a five foot four, eighty liter board. Okay. Um, I think it's still a little bit wide for what's ideal with the foil drive. Still yeah. learning a lot about boards. 
um, and, and what works best with the foil drive. I think it's pretty, it's a pretty unique board shake. Yeah. Shape compared to a lot of other foiling mm -hmm. disciplines, but having that extra length, a little bit more volume made a big difference. I also sized up my foil. Okay. First session I was going with something around a thousand square centimeters, which is just like a nice, easy wave foil for me winging. Yeah. I bumped it up closer to 1200 square centimeters. Okay. So a little bit bigger and that made all the difference. Okay. I was going out there. I was actually able to go out in more kind of downwind swell yeah. that I would be winging in on a good winging day Yeah. and catch those waves early enough that I was able to pop okay. up before they're starting to pitch, get into them nice and early gotcha. and just kind of riding that downwind swell with that setup. Okay. And so I know you've proned a little bit, but did foil drive kind of open the doors up for you proning? How did you feel like your proning skills oh, improved yeah. with foil drive? Absolutely, big time. Like was that your best prone foil session ever, that second session with foil drive? For sure, I've probably got a handful of sessions trying to prone foil. On a good day, being out for an hour, I might get up into a couple of waves. Yeah. And out there with the foil drive, riding around with it, I think I had 10 plus waves in an hour my first time out okay. with the right sized gear. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Ryan here about the progression that you can have with foil drive. As more of an intermediate and advanced prone foiler, when I hopped out on the foil drive today, I caught waves literally nonstop for about an hour and a half, two hours. I brought both batteries with us, so I went to the beach and swapped them out. But I'd basically use the foil drive to get out a quarter mile to the outside break hop on the wave and ride it all the way to shore. If I wanted to get out of the wave because it started you know, breaking down or there was a double up or maybe there was a better looking wave out the back, simply lower the foil drive down in the water and just jet it out to the next wave. It was ridiculous because usually you're pumping, you know, you get tired, you can only pump so far before you have to swing into the next wave, otherwise you're gonna lose speed and fall. But yep. man, that foil drive just blew me away. I seemed like I was on foil for literally the majority of the time that I was out on the water today, which I've never had before. Yeah, and it does take some practice learning how to come down, essentially not off foil, but down to the foil drive and continue yeah. to, to ride. But I had uh, a couple of waves where I wasn't paying attention, wave closed out, yeah. I wasn't really anywhere, but I was able to hit the, the motor, keep going, get past that close out, get into the next wave and keep riding. So super awesome tool for for really anyone to get out there and start riding uh, in some swell and some waves, um, it just really helps level up your progression. You yeah. can learn so much faster with it. You get more waves, really awesome, awesome tool. Yeah, and I think we just, Ryan and I kind of walked you through our story. Really the key takeaways are the foil drive, once you learn how to use it and you get comfortable with it, it will increase your wave count and it will increase your time on foil. So for something like prone foiling, the only way to get better is to catch more waves and to spend more time on foil. And that's exactly what foil drive can offer to you. So Ryan, one other thing I wanna talk about just because there's a lot of stuff online, but just for you and me to break it down to everyone here, what does foil drive require you to learn? What skills do you have to learn that are specifically for foils that have the foil drive on it? I know we talked about it a little bit earlier today, yeah, well, let's just talk about our experiences a little bit. Yeah. Um, you guys are probably, might be familiar with Cole from some of the other videos he's done with us. A lot of boat foiling experience, a lot of dock starting experience, a lot of time on a foil. Myself, quite a bit of wing foil experience, kite foil experience, good amount of time on a foil as well. So I, th I think, obviously, I'm not coming from a, a point of no foil experience, yeah. but I think you really... Use lost you some need, hours behind the kite and under the wing. Yeah, you really need to have some experience foiling before you try and take it out into the waves. Yeah. Now, I know with the right setup, you can also use the foil drive system to essentially e-foil. So that's a way that people yep. can get that foil experience. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to hop out on a foil drive before your proficient foiler yeah. and try and ride waves. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have time on a foil behind the wing, behind the boat, under a kite. Do something before you hop into foil drive because otherwise you're spending a lot of money for something that might not do the job for you. But it'll certainly get the job done for you once you have a little bit of that foil experience. It's an assist. It's a tool that's an assist. Yes. That's the easiest it is. way foil drive keeps saying it. Mm -hmm. It's an assist. It's not going to make you this 
amazing foiler from scratch, you're gonna have to become a foiler and it's going to assist you along in that journey, no matter what point you may be. Yeah. Anywhere from completely brand new, never ridden a foil before. Like I said, there's ways you can e-foil it all the way to riding downwind swells out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. If you've got that kind of pre-request experience, it is there to assist you and it, it does, like you said, it increases your wave count amazingly. Yeah, it's not an easy button, but like Ryan said, it's an amazing tool and I just wanted to emphasize that again with you guys. One thing that I do want to point out to you guys is pulling the foil drive up and out of the water while you're foiling. I know we've gotten a few questions about that over the phone and there's some stuff online about it. I'm gonna talk a little bit what I felt about it and then I'll have you do your take on it. But when I first tried the foil drive, I thought that getting the foil drive unit up and out of the water was going to be this super hard mo movement I'd have to learn. But what I found today was, and Paul from Foil Drive explains this great in his YouTube video, is you simply just literally lift the foil drive propeller unit out of the water. It's actually a super smooth transition. It's not abrupt. Again, it's super smooth. If you force it, that's when you're gonna fall. But if you just let the foil drive do its thing and come out of the water, I didn't notice a huge difference. How did you no, feel about I that? I didn't either. I thought it was very natural. Um, I didn't really pay attention too much to where the foil drive was in the water when I was taking off on waves, other than just knowing when it comes out of the water to let go of the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have, there was no uh, like real difference in power. I feel like it was just real natural coming up onto foil. Eventually the wave had enough power. I was able to get the foil up high enough where mm -hmm. it was out and just let go. It just, it just releases. It's, it's the weirdest thing. You think there'd be this moment where it's like, you get all this drag released when that unit comes out of the water, but you're just up and riding. Yeah. Re-entering the water is a little bit different story. What we, what I've found is when you are gonna, you know, you see the wave out the back or you want to transfer to the next section, section, whatever that might be. When you put the foil drive back into the water, you want to make sure you do one of two things. You either start that propeller before you enter the water or you start the propeller after you have that foil drive unit back submerged completely underneath the water. The reason why you want to do that is if the, if the propeller's halfway in, halfway out of the water, you're going to get this weird cavitation effect where the prop is hitting the water, but it's not, and it makes for a really unstable ride and that caused a lot of my falls to happen. Did you kind of feel a similar way yeah, on that? I felt it was easiest if I could get the propeller spinning before I got down to the foil okay. drive. Generally, I mean, the foil drives up pretty high on the mast. Generally, you know you're coming down kind of off foil at that point, so it's fairly easy to power it back up, full throttle, mm -hmm. and come down to it and just ride the, the motor. So, yeah, definitely something to, to keep in mind there. Yeah, we just want to share our story of learning how to use foil drive with you guys so you guys can have a more efficient time, you know, really try to help you guys with your learning curve when you get on your foil drive. Brian, do you have anything else that everyone should know? Well, guys, that is a quick overview, a quick first impression from Ryan and I about foil drive. We've been loving riding these things and we know you guys will too. And as time progresses here, as we spend more time on the foil drive, we will create more defined, more specific videos to help you guys on your foil drive journey. But until next time, this has been Cole and Ryan from Matt Kite.